How about that? Mm. All right, eight years ago, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger wrote a column after Russia's first invasion of Ukraine, and the elder statesman predicted many of the issues playing out between Russia and the West that are happening today. Joe Concha is here to react, Joe. The headline of this article from March 5th, 2014, is to settle the Ukraine crisis, start at the end. And the key quote is, if Ukraine is to survive and thrive, it must not be either side's out post against the other. It should function as a bridge between them. Joe, not just in this situation, but in situations throughout our current time in place here in America, why do our leaders always fail to follow the warning signs despite them being right in front of our face? There were plenty, right? I mean, we're going back eight years now with this Kissinger piece. And another key quote from that, Todd, is, quote, a wise U.S. policy towards Ukraine would seek a way for the two parts of the country to cooperate with each other. We should seek reconciliation, not the domination of a faction. He was also adamant. He said that Ukraine should not join NATO. That would only provoke Putin. And obviously, Putin now uh, is not only carrying out this war, but doing it in the most insidious ways possible, bombing maternity hospitals, bombing children, hospitals. This is a monster who's not going to stop until he gets what, gets what he wants. The, the question is, after Ukraine, given that Russian forces are being so bogged down and, and getting a fight they never expected, will they even have enough to go to a Poland or truly attack a NATO country where then we have to act? And that's what Kissinger is talking about as far as where is this going next and where do we really draw a line as far as using U.S. forces against a nuclear power, guys? Yeah, that's right, Joe. And this is truly unbelievable, the fact that you know, a lot of the things that he wrote about are playing out to a T. He also stated that Putin should come yeah. to realize, despite grievances, uh, grievances rather, that a policy of military imposition would produce another Cold War. Um, and you, you see with these economic sanctions that are happening um, that the U.S. and our NATO allies have imposed on Russia, I mean, their economy has absolutely crippled. So everything that Henry Kissinger has said eight years ago, it's unfolding today. It is. And, and what you worry about now is, OK, all the, the sanctions obviously are going to have and they already have had a profound effect on the Russian people in terms of lines to get money just simply out of bank accounts to use credit cards to be part of the world economic system. We're a global economy at this point. And then you wonder, how is Putin in a desperate situation, if the Russian people uh, turn on him more, uh, what, what will he do then, backed into a corner? Does he just say, OK, I give up? Or does he then escalate this and double down, like we're seeing with Ukraine and the bombing of civilians? So uh, this is a situation that isn't going to resolve itself anytime soon. And I'd hate to say it's probably going to get worse before it gets better if you listen to all the military analysts yeah. saying that this is going to go on perhaps for years, guys. I think, sadly, we know the answer to your question. It will escalate. Meantime, Joe, yeah. CBS is Gail King contrasting the treatment of Ukrainian refugees to migrants at our southern border. Listen. You look at oh people boy. coming from Haiti, people coming, as I said, El Salvador, Honduras, they were not treated this well. And I think we all want the Ukrainian people to be helped. Everybody agrees with that. But there is enough pain to go around here. Joe, do us a favor. Help Gail understand why her comments miss <laughs> the mark so terribly. So we're comparing Ukrainians, women, children, fleeing bombs and, and a Russian slaughter to migrants coming to this country illegally from countries that at last check uh, don't have bombs uh, flying uh, over their people and onto their people uh, and crossing our southern border. And we should equate the two. Let's remember who Gail King is, by the way. All right. Uh, after President Obama left office in 2017, guess who went on vacation? with the Obamas. Gail King went on vacation with the Obamas. And if you're going to be seen as a CBS news anchor, probably shouldn't be seen in public uh, hanging out with ex-presidents, uh, sutting yourselves and, and having a great time. It's, it's a bad look. And I'm pretty sure Cronkite uh, didn't go on vacation with uh, any of the presidents that were around when he was covering them at CBS News. So we, we know who we're dealing with here. It's not a journalist. It's an activist. And to compare the two between Ukrainians fleeing Ukraine because they have to and they're bringing nothing with them with uh, illegal migrants coming into this country and not being treated well. Uh, that's a whole bowl of wrong guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we're making this about race or religion, I think that everybody should remember how welcoming America was during the disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal. Not everything has to be uh, about right. race or turning America into an evil nation. Uh, Joe, thank you so much for joining us on those two important topics this morning.
Thanks, Joe. We'll see you on Friday, guys. Thanks. Thanks.